what is LPS? What does it have to do with infection? And best yet, what does it have to do with autoimmunity? Hey everybody, today we're here with Kiran Krishnan and I'm gonna let him introduce himself uh, shortly. But first, I wanna answer that hot topic question. What the heck is LPS? So LPS is a compound that's generated within your body. So we call it an endotoxin. So it's not something you can get away from. Uh, it's generated within your body and it is the biggest driver of mortality and morbidity worldwide. There was a very clear 2015 uh, publication in the Frontiers of Immunology that showed that misdirected LPS getting into the wrong places of the body is the biggest driver of chronic disease worldwide, including autoimmune conditions. So if we're not paying attention to this, we really cannot make any progress on our autoimmune conditions. Yeah. And this is huge because a lot of people with autoimmunity uh, understand that they're at much higher risk for infection, but they don't understand necessarily how this infection autoimmunity is linked and why that means that they would have an elevated level of LPS and what the implications of that is. So that's what we're going to be here to talk about today. Uh, I'm Maggie UMD. I am a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol to help turn around any autoimmune disease around naturally. And Kiran, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. So I'm Kiran Krishnan. I'm a research microbiologist with a heavy focus on the last uh, 10, 15 years in the, in the human microbiome and how the gut microbiome and other biomes, all the microbes in and around us, how they impact our overall health. And, and best of all, what are the healing opportunities within this uh, powerful ecosystem of microbes in order to improve our outcomes? Let's deep dive, deep dive more into LPS. Yeah. So let's go through how is LPS created? Yeah, so LPS is, is, uh, stands for lipopolysaccharide. Uh, now, what that actually means, it's basically a carbohydrate head, and it has these long fatty acid tails, right? That's the structure of LPS. It's actually made by bacteria, by these types of bacteria called gram-negative bacteria. Every bacteria in the world is either gram-negative or gram-positive. What that means is that if they have a cell wall structure, there's a process in microbiology and very basic microbiology where you can stain the bacteria. And when you look at it under a microscope, it either picks up the stain or it doesn't pick up the stain. If it picks up the stain, it means it has a cell wall and the wall gets stained and me that means it's gram positive. If it doesn't pick up the stain, it doesn't have a cell wall. It has a cell membrane instead, which is different. So it becomes gram negative. Now these gram negative bacteria and not all of them are bad. That's a, that's a common misconception. There's many perfectly fine commensal gram-negative bacteria that aren't infectious in that way, but all gram-negative bacteria produce this LPS. Now, it's a, it's a compound that the bacteria themselves use for many reasons. Uh, they use it for adhesion. That's how they stick to things in some cases. They use it for communication with other microbes. So they have many uses for it. It's a compound that sticks through their membrane and, and when it's in the bacteria sticking in the membrane, it doesn't really cause any problems. And about half the microbes or a little bit more that live in your system, both in your GI tract, in your mouth, on your skin, everywhere else are gram negative bacteria. So at least half of the 40 to 50 trillion bacteria that live in your system make this lipopolysaccharide or LPS. Now, when it's not in the membrane of the bacteria, it becomes what we call an endotoxin because it is highly toxigenic when it's not sticking in the membrane of the bacteria. And so bacteria die constantly all over your body, inside your gut and, and the rest of your body. Every time this gram-negative bacteria dies, it releases the LPS so it's free on its own. Yeah. And if that LPS gets to the wrong parts of the body, it can trigger massive inflammatory responses. So that's LPS in a nutshell. And that's why it's called an endotoxin. It's a toxin that's created within the body. We can't get away from it. Uh, compare that to an exotoxin, like a mold toxin, for example, mm -hmm. you know, that you might have a moldy home and you can try to get away from that home uh, to escape the toxin. This is an endotoxin that's within. I'm going to ask a question here. How many of you know for a fact you're dealing with an infection 
uh, anywhere in your body. And it is a major trigger of your autoimmunity. Type it in chat because a lot of people think it's just about gut infection. And I can tell you right now, LPS can happen from urinary tract infection, uh, sinus infection, dental. Specifically for me, I think sinus, throat, and dental is huge for people with autoimmunity and it's hidden. Um, people even ignore those results in a stool study test, oftentimes calling it commensal, like meaning that's normal. But it's so interesting to me that the autoimmune population ground has a really high level of these dental, um, throat, and sinus. And I mean, I know you guys are also looking at vaginal flora as well. We are, yeah. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind that the, the vaginal canal is a uh, very susceptible to the presence of gram-negative bacteria because yeah. it's close to the anus, right? Mm-hmm. So there's lots of fecal bacteria that move in there. And a predominance of fecal bacteria like E. coli tends to be gram-negative. Yep. Same thing in the mouth, Enterococcus, E. coli, all of these organisms that inhabit the mouth are all gram negative. They have direct access to your blood through your gums, right? It's a, the, the soft tissue in the mouth it, it has lots of capillary beds, bleeds easily, as we all know, when we brush and floss. So there's lots of ways for that gram negative bacteria to get that LPS into your system. And of course, there's a very, very common one. That the, that the majority of adults are infected with that, w- that maybe we don't think about enough, and that's Helicobacter pylori or H. Yeah. pylori, which infects your stomach lining, and, and at least 50% of adults are infected with, with infectious levels of it. And it's much higher for people with autoimmunity. Absolutely, it's yeah. There's, there's lots of correlations there, because what happens with that is it infects the lining of your stomach, right? And it creates these holes, uh, this, these uh, holes, if you will, and, and permeability in the lining of your stomach. And then it secretes LPS into circulation through the lining of the stomach. And it is a gram-negative bacteria. And so, uh, you know, compare that to gram-negative bacteria in your intestines that secrete LPS into your, your circulation. In your intestines, about 80, 85% of the circulation goes to the liver first. So the liver is taking a big hit, right? Trying to deal with these toxins coming in from the stomach, it goes directly into circulation. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you've got lots and lots of this endotoxin circulating throughout your body. It can lodge itself in many different tissues where it can trigger an inflammatory response. That inflammatory response can be the onset of an autoimmune response in that region, or it can circulate around and create a systemic inflammatory response, uh, which can also be, be the foundation trigger of autoimmunity. People are asking, I have rheumatoid arthritis. Someone said, I have a, a, a rheumatoid arthritis. I have Hashimoto's. I don't care what your diagnosis is. It could be Sjogren's lupus, all autoimmune disease. Why should we care about LPS, which is the yeah. high amount of infection LPS in our bodies? Yeah. So, so a couple of things. Number one, um, keep in mind that inflammation is the soup in which autoimmune diseases breed right? So if you have systemic inflammation or inflammatory triggers, that's what triggers the immune cascade that can lead to autoimmune disease. Um, The second part of it is some of these inflammatory triggers like LPS can actually be the key that starts a process called the bystander effect that creates an autoimmune response to some body tissue. So take rheumatoid arthritis, for example. If you get a bunch of LPS that floods through into your system, because your gut is leaky, you've got too much gram-negative bacteria and so on. The LPS is very pervasive. It can make its way into your joints. When it gets into your joints, it triggers an inflammatory response in your joints because your immune system sees it as a severe toxin. So when your innate immune system shows up and it starts attacking that area, it's essentially attacking your joints. When you have massive amounts of inflammatory damage, what can happen is your innate immune system can accidentally pick up your own tissue and present it to the adaptive immune system as the trigger or as the target for the infectious problem. And so that's how your your, uh, adaptive immune system accidentally starts making antibodies against your own tissue. It's called the bystander effect because your own tissue is a mm-hmm. bystander, is an innocent bystander in that inflammatory battle. Now, your immune system has a regulatory component that is designed to identify these accidental exposures and suppress them. That's called the Treg system. The yep. problem, however, is when your microbiome is messed up and you have too much gram-negative bacteria and you have leaky gut and all that, the Treg system is not working properly. 
Right. The monitors of this kind of erroneous immune response are also not working when you have high levels of LPS. So it's a perfect storm of things to that allows your immune system to start to go haywire and attack your own tissue. So if you can reduce that perfect storm, if you can reduce that continuous flooding in of LPS, that inflammatory cascade, the bystander effect, it gives your body a chance to start catching up to figure out which immune responses it should be eliciting and which yeah. ones it shouldn't. Ron, if you had one biggest takeaway for people about LPS and autoimmunity, what are the three most crucial things people with autoimmune disease should do to reduce their LPS? So number one, uh, I think at getting diversity back into your diet is going to be critical, right? So going through the food mapping process, understanding the food triggers, understanding what foods you can put back into your diet, and then making a very specific plan to get those foods back into your diet and diversify your gut microbiome is going to be absolutely critical because that diverse gut microbiome is going to control a lot of these infectious and LPS-borne microbes into your system. Number two, utilizing the spore-based probiotics. Uh, we've published studies showing that just 30 days of the megaspore, for example, yep. completely stops and reduces LPS from translocating or migrating into circulation. So it's a very powerful tool for stopping LPS from getting through into your system. And then number three, you have to clean up some of those other lifestyle components, the pillars um, that you were just talking about, Maggie, the pillars like getting blood sugar control, you know, micronutrient density, um, those types of things that you can start to do to improve the ecosystem and the terrain of your body. Because without though, paying attention to those things, the terrain gets dismantled. And the moment there's a dismantling of terrain, microbes, egregious microbes start to take over, right? There's yeah. no balance in the system. Yeah. And so you have to do those things. It's not a magic pill. It takes a little bit of effort. You know, you're not going to see results just overnight, but it's foundational, meaning yeah. that the results, when they come, they last forever. Kiran, thank you so much for coming on and really sure. doing a mind blow around LPS for our audience. Yeah, it, it's my pleasure. And uh, thank you for your mission for transferring people's health because these foundations, these pillars are so critical uh, for people to make permanent change. So it's, it's great to be able to uh, talk on the subjects. Thanks everybody. And if you wanted to learn more about the transform program, there is a link in chat for you to book a chat with our team. Thanks everybody.